we want to talk to Roger Gewalb uh, from London, uh, who uh, is an American who works and lives in the UK and has done that for a number of years. And we reached out to him after we heard the news of the death of the Queen. And uh, Roger, I mean, for most people, they cannot remember a world uh, where Queen Elizabeth was not the queen. And you see the kind of outpouring of love and respect for her and also for the new King Charles III. I'd like to tell you three things, really. I'd like to tell you uh, uh, about the announcement of Her Majesty's death, and I'd like to tell you and your listeners um, why this is as you say, why this is reverberating around the world the way it is, at least my theory. And then I'd like to tell you uh, what she was like, because I've met her. Uh, b- before I do, though, I'd like to tell you a little story that uh, actually came to me only this afternoon. Um, it's a true story. About 10 or 15 years ago, uh, a couple of Americans were hiking through the hills around Balmoral Castle in Scotland. And uh, they were chatting with the various uh, British people as they met them along the way. And the, the last people they saw, they saw a couple, and uh, they chatted with them. And then uh, they said, do you, do you live around here? And the man said, yeah, just, just over the hill over there. And they said, oh, really? And they said, well, how long have you lived here? And the, the woman said, well, I, I, I've lived here. You know, I've been coming back and forth, but I, I live in London, too, but I've lived here all my life. And they said, oh, fantastic. And they said, well, so you, you must have met the Queen in all these years. She said, no, I never have, but he has. And they said to the guy, really? You've met, really, you've met the queen? And he said, yeah. He, he, well, I mean, actually, I see her most days. And he said, no, really? And so the guy gave his camera to the girl and said, here, just he put his arm around the man and said, take our picture. So the queen took the picture. And um, then when they, they all said thank you and left, and when the Americans had left, the queen turned to her uh, household uh, 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 companion and said, Gosh, I wish I could be a fly on the wall when they get home to America and show this picture to their friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what do you feel the impact is? So, well, I think I think for, I said three things. The first thing is the way the um, the way the announcement of her death occurred. Um, my wife and I were on our way out to the theater to see a production of Neil Simon's uh, California Suite. And we were watching the television where uh, basically it was just no news, no news. Watching, We were watching vehicles go in, in and out of the gates of uh, Balmoral. And uh, we turned off uh, the, the telly, as we called it here, got in the car, drove down the lane, halfway down the lane. We turned on the radio and it said, the king and his consort will remain at Balmoral tonight and return to London tomorrow. The shock was unbelievable. I mean, in that one minute that we'd gotten into the car, uh, you know, they made the announcement. I, I felt like when I walked into a room and saw a television set and saw them playing 9-11, or even more than that, when I was very young, when I heard on a car radio as we were going along that they had shot President Kennedy. It was the same kind of shock feeling uh, for me, and I think that probably affected a lot of other people. The second thing is, why is this reverberating the way it is? I, I think it's because the queen represented in this world of Putin's and gas and oil and energy and cost of and madness and everything so crazy. And, you know, deputies being ambushed in Georgia and people shooting each other, all this madness. She represented this constant calm and continuity for seven decades, which is extraordinary. And I think that certainly people here that I've spoken to feel this strange feeling that something valuable has been taken away from us, that that continuity, which made us all feel a bit more stable, has been, has been taken away, has been lifted. The third thing I want to say is about meeting here. I had the incredible honor of being presented to uh, the Queen some years ago at a private uh, function. And I was just amazed. She was, she was very small. She was, by American standards, she was tiny. Um, I was amazed at this huge aura, Martha, of, of calm, dignity, and incredible energy around this very small person. It was like 10 people were standing there as I shook her hand and we chatted for a minute. It was, it was quite something. So well, 
I, I think what's yeah. so amazing, I mean, what's so amazing about her is that she was so far ahead of her time in so many things. I mean, there are, you know, the naysayers that that are trying to pin colonialism on Queen Elizabeth II, when in fact she is the person that navigated the Great Britain out of colonialism by by putting the Commonwealth together and being so strong about it. I mean, people think it's nothing when she goes to visit a country. I mean, people that don't like the monarchy. But when she would go to those African countries and she would dance with the leaders of the African countries at a at a dinner, people don't understand today, looking back at it, what a huge thing that was. And what it did was it started this momentum that now is the Commonwealth. Well, there was a, there was a headline today in one of the, uh, one of the uh, papers that said, nobody ever told her what a great job she did. Uh, and, and, and you're right. I mean, that's a perfect example of the sort of thing she did. She was always there. Some people are saying, that, I mean, if you look at the pictures, if you look at the, the photos of her shaking Liz Truss's hand, she looks a bit frail, but she's smiling. She looks fine. And then 48 hours later, she's gone. So some people are actually saying she actually hung on to make sure that she welcomed her 15th prime minister. It's about duty. That was her dedication. You know, it was about duty. Roger Gewald, thank you so much for giving us this insight this morning. And, of course, the funeral has been announced to be on September the 19th. There is going to be 10 days of mourning, and we will be hearing from King Charles III uh, for the first time later on uh, today. Thank you, Roger, for being with us today. Thank you.